Before the war, I thought one day the world around me would start to make sense. What's going on? Following the detonation of a nuclear device, all civilians are being evacuated. This is our home. We're not leaving. I want to be here with you. We need to get away from here. I've got everything together. We're going home. Daisy is the kind of girl that appears a certain way to everyone she meets um, and is actually not like that at all. She's, um, she's a bit of a bitch, to be honest, when you meet her at first. She won't let anyone in and it's this defence thing that she has, you know? There was a lot that we actually were going to focus on in the script originally about the relationship between her and her father and how she was basically kind of left by him. Um, she never met her mother, so I think she's really... She's very much riddled by guilt and kind of hates herself, you know? She blames herself for an, an awful lot of the stuff that's happened in her life. So then she's thrown into this amazing, bohemian, very accepting um, family all of a sudden, and she doesn't know how to handle it, and she wants to desperately be a part of it, but she doesn't really know how to take these people in or how to understand them or how to even talk to them. Hey, do you want a drink? You know. And you can wash your hands in the sink if you want. Piper, leave her. It's not time. Is your mom out or...? No. She's um, in her study. We don't usually see her before nine. She's an expert in loony extremists. She's going to save the world. Piper, shut up. Take Cousin Daisy to her room. Come on, Cousin Daisy. I need to give you the grand tour of the house. With someone like Daisy, um, You'd look at her and you think, OK, she's a pretty modern teenage girl, but she made me think an awful lot about myself, you know? Um, and I think that's what a good, strong female character can do. So, can you leave? Now, please? All right. Can I get you a cup of tea? No, thanks. I guess the main draw was Kevin. I've always loved his work and I was quite excited about the idea of working with someone who did documentary filmmaking as well because I think then with something like this that could so easily be kind of glamorised in a way, this sort of story, since it could so easily just be about a sort of teenage romance. Um, it was kind of portrayed as something that was quite raw, I think, um, and very realistic once we get into um, the war and when Daisy and Piper are on the run. And I think it was so great to have someone like Kevin doing that because he wasn't kind of over-sentimental or anything. If there's a line that could have been a little bit cheesy just because of the subject matter and stuff, um, we'd take it out and he'd have no problem taking it out. And he really respected me whenever I came up to him and kind of felt strongly about maybe things going a different way or something to do with the dialogue or whatever. He'd always listen. And that was amazing for, for a director as fantastic as him who has, you know, predominantly worked with adults to then be thrown in a field for three months in Wales with six kids, basically. Um, he was so patient and he listened to all of us and he respected all of us and I think he really got a kick out of everything that we were doing. All the footage that you see of the kids kind of just hanging out and messing about in the field and um, the river scenes and all that sort of stuff, basically Kevin just let the cameras roll and he might tell us to, you know, all right, jump in the water now or something. But apart from that, they just kind of let us do our own thing and because we had all developed these relationships with each other and had this really great dynamic pretty early on, um, it made it even more real. What's up with them? It's probably Sally just getting into the house. I can hear for miles. Sally's our opa. She's got double-jointed thumbs.
We only read with about maybe 10 boys altogether, which really wasn't that much. Um, and it just made sense when George came in, really. And it was, you know, that typical thing of when he left the room, everyone looked at each other and kind of nodded and went, yes, I think, I think that's Eddie, so. I mean, we loved our scenes together because we were the older actors out of all the kids, you know, um, and we had done quite a bit of work before um, this film, so it was really nice to, to, to share those scenes with George because he's such a fantastic actor. Um, and what I love about what he does is that everything's so underplayed and you almost don't realise how great it is what he's doing, you know, at the time. So I think we always really enjoyed our scenes together because it gave us a chance to just play around with a few things and really work them out together and stuff. Um, and they had to be, without trying too hard, they had to be strong and they had to um, make an impact because then it's even more heartbreaking when they're separated. Girls, follow me. Wherever they take you, find a way to get back here. Promise me. You can't split us up. You know, you always want the author of the book that you're adapting to be to be happy with you and not be, you know, not going to look at you and think, oh, they picked you, <laughs> you know. Um, and she wasn't like that. Meg came on set, I think maybe about halfway through, and uh, and she brought her niece as well. And she came on set, and of course we were all really nervous because we hadn't met her before, and so it was really nice to just spend some time with her and kind of chat to her about what she thought about what we were doing and stuff. And in here is your room. You've so got the best bed in the house. Harold's is brilliant. She's she's just a little red-headed bundle of energy. Um, and she's so excited about everything all the time. Um, and she she did become like a little sister to me. I really wanted to take care of her and... Um, <coughs> sorry. She kind of she kept us all going just because, you know, she's 10 years old and had never worked on a film before and had this amazing excitement for everything that we were doing. Piper. Piper, what are you doing? It might be poison. I forgot. Well, you can't forget, okay? If you don't know the source, you can't trust the water. And you shouldn't have eaten all that chocolate. That was stupid. And that's what I really like about it as well, is that she doesn't suddenly turn into this really caring, kind of understanding girl who, who takes care of her cousin. You know, she's she has to do it because otherwise they're going to either be stuck there or if they leave, they'll die or they'll be caught or something. And she's so in love with this boy that she'll do anything to get back to him. And that's really the only... I mean, that's the mature element of it, I think. Um, that kind of drives her through. But she, you know, she puts up with Piper for a long time, but doesn't necessarily um, want to care for her. Sometimes people say things they don't mean. Your mom loves you more than anything. And she's so proud of you. I know that for a fact. How? Well, I'm older than you, and it's just something I know. And listen, about last night, I'm, I'm sorry I said that stuff. I didn't mean it, OK? Come on. It was a very English-type landscape that we're all really familiar with, and that's what I think made it even more scary, is that, you know, not to put a downer on things, but, like, it could happen. This is the thing, is that we didn't have a lot of money on this film, but what they what they did with, you know, children's shoes being left in the forest or the plane crash or, you know, something like that, that uh, that's all you really need, I think, to get the audience to realise how serious this is. I mean, it's very current, I think. It's a very modern um, style, and I, and I really like that.